Hello. This is Zoom. So you think that that's an okay look for Zoom? If I, if I move a little bit closer, I have less of that arm. Okay. Oh, I can switch the camera. Test, test, check, check, check. One, 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 two, one, two, one, two, three, four. I 
Something in the water, something in the water, something in this God will save my place. I don't know, but it hurts to show me. And I hope it's close for me. Searching for something else. I was wrong till you came along. You turned on my light as my best defense. Now I'm not afraid. I have no fear. It's an open door and I'll let you in. Someone else sing for my swanee dream. Bring my soul to move in there. Something in the water, something in the water, something in this God forsaken place. I don't know, hush to show, and I hope it's full, it's full of me.
Test, one, two, test. This is just a sound check, of course. Be alright. 
so much video out of my fingers. Oh, I have to like to explain to me what this is recording. It's made to not open. Oh, I got this. No, or else you get wet, man. Yeah. Oh, 
Hey, Charlie. I've been sitting right there. That's my water bottle. And I was coming down to bring the drink. I was going to grab some of the chairs. Check one, two, um, Mark, you usually come in with uh, with Joe on the glass, but in this case, I'm, I'm going to start it, and you just kind of join in when you get, get the vibe. All of them. All of them, I'll start, and you just get to come in. Let's try to get those harmonies together on the... Five minutes until. Should we keep warming up or should we just uh, give them a few minutes to come in?
your mic If you want to carry around like this, you know, or do you want to sit down and talk how you want? I don't, it's up to you, man. Your style. I got a wire. I got a wire. Those kids start a fire. The kids start a fire. Let me know. Yeah.
guy that I, I knew a guy that uh, played in Texas and then I knew another guy who was selling his business to me, and I found out that he was selling it, and it was on the car store, and I was out and I bought the guy's business. What do you learn from? He's kind of like, uh, he's the only guy, like, he's the only guy that's 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 the only
our next training will be on uh, November, no, September the 11th, that's a Saturday. Um, we train volunteers to do water quality testing of both chemical and bacterial. Our 17 volunteers go every week to the rivers, collect water samples and check for bacteria so that we can report back both to the state of Georgia and to swim guide what the quality of the water is. Is it safe to swim in the river? If you're going to go boating, is it safe to be in the river? So um, if you're interested in joining our water quality um, team, our next training is on September the 11th. That's a Saturday. That's a combo kind of thing. We do the classroom portion by Zoom. And then we do um, the in-person portion, social resistance at a local creek. So there you go. Those are the two parts I'm talking about right now. Um, our host, Samantha Matthew. Samantha, are you back there? Come say a few words about the Turner Center. On behalf of the board and the staff at the Turner Center, we just thank you so much for being here tonight. It's so wonderful to have this part. Um, there is more to the center than this. There's um, the art building that's right behind you, the galleries, that's the big building behind you. We've also just purchased the um, the old uh, former Synovus Bank and the building next to it. The bank is going to become the next children's art museum. And the building south of it is going to become a glass blowing facility that opens up this fall. So um, just so many things going on at the Turner Center. So check us out at uh, www.turnercenter.org or just stop in and see us. There's so many great things, classes, concerts, um, musical instruments, uh, lessons, pottery is in that building right there. Just a whole lot of things to keep your, your life enriched and fun. All right. Thank you so much. Please, hope we see you again soon. Wes? Thank you so much for what the Turner Art Center does for our community. Hoochie Coochie on the Little Coochie. Does that sound familiar? Well, if it don't, it should, because that was last year's winner. If you would, let's make welcome to the stage right here, Scott Perkins and Little Perks in Paradise. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Check, two, three, there it is. Okay. Hello. Welcome, we're glad you're here. We're glad we're here. Yes. We're glad the George Beer Company's here. We're glad the Four <laughs> Company. We appreciate the sponsors, we appreciate the support, we appreciate uh, Wes contributing his time and, and talents to us. I was uh, fortunate enough to, to get that title last year with a song that I actually wrote about the year before that because that event was just so surreal that I, I had to write the song. So a little, little character, but you might recognize a few of them. Now we're gonna start off with that song, Hoochie Coochie for the Wind La Coochie.
Songwriter Showcase, we're going to play some original music for you. We're collectively the Little Perks of Paradise Band. We're missing our bass player, Joe Little, but that's Mark Paradiso on the drums. I'm Scott Perkins. That's the Little Perkins Paradise. And then the, the, the greatest perk of all, Miss Michelle Hubert, is going to back us up on the backup vocals and take a few of those and we'll leave herself. But we're based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and um, happy to get a chance to play some of these uh, original songs. I figure if you're here tonight, you probably have to have a healthy dose of optimism. So this, this is kind of my ode to, uh, to optimists, a song called The Glass. If you want to join in the chorus, just go, just be damn thankful you've been given a glass and you've got something in it. Yeah. Seems so dramatic. It's like he'll sabotage any car in his garage. He needs to learn to be pragmatic. He needs to learn to be Love doesn't seem to satisfy. He says, I'm not a lover, savvy. The glass is half full, kind of guy. song in our dance contest tonight and it is a song about a river it's a true story which the best songs are all true stories but this is about a girl i met in the walk by the river and how she fell into it
Story. It just makes me happy. Pretty girl that fell in that river sitting in a chair in a front suit up here. So, uh, <laughs> 30, at her phone. <laughs> 33 years later, I'm still here. She's still there. Yay! Uh, uh, I've got a sister who lives here in Valdosta and has raised a family in 20 years. She's bought the big table up front, and all her friends have come out happy about that. Her son, my nephew's uh, kind of a mentee of mine. He let me uh, teach him a little bit about how to play the guitar and write songs. And I give him a co-write on this next song because he was trying to tell me about a girl that may or may not be his girlfriend. We were trying to figure that out. I asked whether he'd written a song for her yet. He goes, you know, I don't usually write a song for him until after we break up. <laughs> a lot of songwriters in the room. Know exactly what we're what we're talking about. So I uh, wrote a song called "If You Hear This Song, I'm Already Gone." Thank 
Kind of a sad song when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah. Hate, yeah. hate to bring it down, not really. That's well, part of our job, actually. We play with your emotions like that. So I'm going to take you down just a little further. This is a this is a song that I wrote called Epiphany, and uh, it's a uh, apology. So if you listen to the lyrics, I'm going to have Michelle uh, play. Song for me. Got an egg there? Got the shake there, maybe. You'll figure something out. Watch the storm last night. I thought I saw you in a brilliant flash of light. And you were crying tears of pain. They fell in precious drops of rain. I thought I caught a signal in your eye that I thought if I moved closer, it would be all right. And I'm so sorry I was wrong. I hope someday you hear this song. So may I apologize. I'm sorry that I hurt you. Looking to your side, dark eyes, to see if you're okay. I never meant to hurt you. I did not realize. Into my terrible epiphany, I've thrown away your gift to me. my crying in your beer song. Get your beer. This might be good on that 7211 uh, country show. I'd, I'd love to hear Myrtle Haggard have sung this song. What a dream of mine. But, uh, all right. Thank you. Well, they are all for sale. Everything you hear tonight, just, just give me a call. They're, they're copyrighted, but they are all for sale. It's over. 
Been wet down, baby, so tight. Before you've gone, give me the signal, show me a sign. I don't know it's time. And the street man, let's give me the signal. Please let me know that it's time to go. I will hold you, stay with you for as long as the feelings rise. do a little something from my Nouveau Jazz uh, book here.
sing this song with y'all because I really kind of wanted the audience participation. I kind of figured this is our, uh, our our big Earth Day, World Day, ecology kind of boosters here, right? Y'all, you're all kind of Keep for the that. Rivers, Keep the rivers, yeah, clean. clean rivers. So th this is kind of my big Earth Day anthem. And at the end of it, I've always just imagined like crowd singing that last verse for me about brother man, sister Earth, father time, and mother nature. If you get to that part, we ask you to clap your hands and sing along with us. You'll be fulfilling a lifelong dream for you. in paradise and we love you there's nothing you can do about it Hey folks, give it up one more time for Scott Perkins and the Little Perks in Paradise. Good song, good picture, Scott. Good music there. <laughs> 
I'll have I'll have my people call your people and we'll do lunch. How's that? If you'll just um kind of bear with me for just one second, um, I'm going to introduce some folks to you. First of all, I want to start with the folks sitting at the table with me, Mr. Jesse in that blue shirt right there, and the lovely lady sitting next to him. Last Friday night, proved that she was certifiable, certifiably insane. She agreed to become my bride in November. He's not on the program, but I think he deserves some attention. About six months ago, Gail's Rivers, who owns Rivers Radio, she um, called me. She said, Wes, I, I, wanna, I want somebody to, I got this man I want to bring into the studio and talk about um, some projects and things around about us in our area. I had no idea what Walls was. Nothing at all. I mean, no idea. Had no idea about the Swanee River Songwriters Contest either. I wanted to enter, but they told me as MC I couldn't because you know, I might influence the judges. They said I couldn't do that. But as a singer, as a songwriter, and as Scott will, will attest, we can be some very passionate people about what we do. Isn't that right, Scott? Very, very passionate. I have never met anyone more passionate about what they do than John Quarterman. Folks, John, stand up. Give that man a big hand right there. In the tie-dye shirt. He is very, extremely passionate about what he does and making this a success. At this time, I'd like to introduce Tom Johnson, the president of Walls. And he's going to tell you a little, he's going to introduce some other folks to you and tell you a little bit about the drawings, I guess, in the finalists or the uh, finalist draw straws and who plays when and that kind of stuff. John, you'll come on up, please. Thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. Tom, come on up, please. Thank you. Uh, I was going to do this, and then I've been requested twice to do this. There's a silent auction tonight. and. Um, and I saw a thing on social media the other day that somebody said that they used the word neat and that really dated them. And they asked people to list words that are outdated below that. And so I'll, let me use some outdated words. There's some groovy, super califragilistic, expialidocious items over there uh, on the silent auction table. And before the evening's over, you've got to see between now and 1030, you can go over there and make a bid on some of those wonderful items that your wall, your dining room table, or your closet floor can't do without. So I hope you'll go, you'll go take a look. Uh, Virgil Dawson, would you wave your hand over there? Can you see that man waving his hand? There he is. That's where it is. So thank you. Um, in the last two days, I started counting up, and I thought it was just five, but I've had six or even seven people asked me about the Swanee River Basin or the Swanee Watershed. And uh, I thought that I've seen a lot of people looking at their smartphones. You can pull your smartphone out and open Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever maps you have uh, if you want to look at it. But I want to tell you about the area that is that where the water flows and eventually winds up at the mouth of the Swanee at Swanee, Florida. At the furthest north is in Dooley County. If anybody knows where that is, you can raise your hand. Three people know where Dooley County is. Going up I 75, it's uh, the Vianna exit, you turn right, and somewhere out in a cotton field, there's a low place that's the headwaters of the Lafaha River, which is the northernmost part of the Swanee River Basin. It flows south through Seaville and Pitts, Georgia. Right between them. Now, Seville, if you're in Spain, you would call it Seville, but the local people call it Seville. Am I buzzing when I talk? A little closer. Okay, that's better. Uh, going down the west side of the Swanee River Basin, and this is very rough, but it goes from uh, Ashburn, Georgia, down to the eastern side of uh, Moultrie. The eastern side of Quitman crosses the state line, goes to the west of Perry, Florida, and comes on around and comes in, again, comes out at Swanee. Uh, going back to the north, it flows 
south from between Seaville and Pitts. Curves on around down underneath Pearson, Georgia. That's a little closer to home here. Y'all know Pearson? Two people know where Pearson is. Well, it's up that way about 45 miles. Is that right? Yeah, that way. It curves on around down below Waycross, the edge of Waycross. It goes into the edge of the Okefenokee. Passes through something called Kingfisher Landing between Waycross and Folkestone. Curves into the Okefenokee. Goes around underneath the Swanee River Basin. Uh, comes back out. It goes down the edge of Stark, Florida. Y'all know where that is? Goes down uh, to the eastern, you know, to the western side of Gainesville, and then it begins to curve on down, and all that water comes out where? At the mouth of the Swanee in Swanee, Florida. Uh, how many miles did you say it was, John? About 10,000 square miles? 10,000 square miles. The largest city in the Swanee River Basin is Fargo. No. Uh, anybody want to guess? Valdosta is the largest city in the Swanee River Basin. It's not Brantford, Florida. It's not Mayo. Uh, it's not Nashville. It's Valdosta. What is the second largest city in the Swanee River Basin? Brantford. Not Brantford. <laughs> Is Tipton. Uh, what's the third largest city in the Swanee River Basin? The edge of it. That's a hint. It's Moultrie. Okay. Uh, I grew up in Valdosta, left, came back and finished college here, left, came back again, went to school a little more, left, and I moved to Thomasville. I was just barely out of the Swanee River Basin. I continued to canoe here. Kayak here, visit the springs. Even though I now live uh, in Pine Mountain, Georgia, I've never really kind of left the area. Like I still come back too much and say that I've completely moved away. Uh, but the Swanee River Basin just fascinates me. Now, here's another kind of fun fact to go and tell. What percentage of the Okefenokee Swamp drains into the Swanee River? And what percentage of the Okefenokee oh, Swamp drains into the St. Mary's River? It is not 50 50, not even close. A little closer, but you need to go up. 92% goes into the Swanee River. Only 8%, more or less, depending on the year, goes into the St. Mary's River. That means a good bit of the St. Mary's water in that watershed comes from down around McClinney or somewhere. You know where that is. So, those are all the facts that I'm going to tell about uh, the Swanee River Basin. But some that binds the whole area together. If you drill down far enough, you get limestone. And we all know that water flows underground here, and that means water from way up there, uh, even as far north as maybe Perry, some of that water eventually winds up down here because it flows underground through the limestone. Uh, I'm I want to say the reason that I wanted to serve on the Walsh Watershed Coalition is when I was in high school 50 years ago, actually it was longer than 50 years ago, I just finished 50 years ago, but when I was a, say, sophomore in high school, Valdosta City Sewage was making the headline of the Valdosta Daily Times, and I was a paper boy, and so I read the, at least the front page every single day, and while I was in college, guess what was making the front pages of the Valdosta Daily Times? Sewage fields. I moved, I did move out of the area uh, far enough not to see the Daily Times every day, but guess what was still making the front page or, or the front of the local section 40 years later, 45 years later. And I want to say thank you to the city of Valdosta because most of that at least has been resolved. So thank you, Valdosta. Uh, I'm, I'm no longer slightly embarrassed to say that I'm from Valdosta. If I'm around people that like to canoe and scuba dive and whatnot downstream from here, but Walls has really been a catalyst in helping that happen. And Walls is doing something else that uh, that people don't know about 
there's going to be uh, eventually, it looks like it really is going to happen, uh, a river camp and a regional camp at the, where the Troopville boat landing is. And I hope we all know where that is. That was the original uh, site of Valdosta and, Valda, or, and the people moved into town to be where the railroad was. But there's a boat ramp there and the area up here south of that boat ramp uh, where the Withlacoochee runs into the little and the little really becomes Withlacoochee down to where it gets the swatting. That's going to be a nature park. It'll be a canoe camp. Uh, there'll be uh, uh, frisbee golf courses and all that sort of thing down in that big area down there. So I want to say, say thank you, Valdosta, and thank you, Lowndes County and Brooks County for making the good things happening and for taking things that I'm kind of embarrassed off the front page and making it so that all of us can be proud to be drinking the water here and not worrying about the people that are downstream. Okay, I'm supposed to introduce some people after me, but for the most part, because of either because of uh, COVID uh, or because of other commitments, they can't be here. And I want you to know, I believe that the finalists have already drawn straws. So that's off the list. So I'm going to, to call the person who will talk as much or more than me, John Quarterman, to come talk about public relations. Thank you, John. See, Wes, I am on the agenda, just I'm in disguise. <laughs> um, I've actually been to the source of the Alapaha River. It's on private land, and I talked to the landowners who says, if you go down there, you're going to get stuck. I says, how far do I walk? She says, you've got to get all muddy. I says, I'm used to it. I'm a farmer. So I did, and I took pictures, and I posted it. That's part of what I do as a chair of the Public Relations Committee. This organization's got all sorts of committees that do all sorts of things. You'll hear about more of them later. But it's my job to get things in the front page of the news. Um, somewhere around here tonight is Amanda Usher with the Valdosta Daily Times, who's written a couple of really good. I see somebody point. There she is. Where is she? I know she said, there she is. There she is in the back of the camera. She's trying to escape, but you can see her. She's written a couple of really good stories. Um, I've also been in places like NBC News, New York Times. I was talking about that underground water. That's a big problem, especially in Florida. It's not as bad in Georgia. I say that in Paris and read often. Georgia, not as bad as Florida. And what's going on in Florida is there's too much water being withdrawn from the Florida aquifer. That's the underground water we all drink from. And the state of Florida shows no indication of really being willing to do anything about it. Water withdrawal permit? Sure, here you go. So, um, <clears throat> The particular story I was in recently on NBC News and uh, New York Times was about uh, um, Bill Gates. As you may not be aware, he's the biggest private landowner of farmland in this country. He bought up thousands of acres in the Swanee River Basin, starting with the Coggins Tarrant Farm over in Edwards County. So we've been following that from the beginning. And um, now it's his money to do what he wants with it. It was his investment arm. But he had an opportunity to do something to fix this problem, that and other related agricultural problems. All he did was literally tinker around the edges, center pivot irrigation around the corners of the property planted longleaf pine trees. Now, I like longleaf pine trees, but that is literally tinkering around the edges. So I do stuff like that. And when I went to the uh, source of the Lapa River, I took pictures and published them. I'm supposed to send those to the landowner. If you're listening on our live stream, through Zoom or Facebook, I'll get them to you soon. I will, I promise. Tom Magna, if I don't. So, and um, yeah, I try to, um, uh, Tom is being very, uh, complimentary to the city of Valdosta, and they do deserve a lot of compliments. The sewage problem is a lot less, but we also try to make sure that what remains, they can't forget about it. There's one particular street that I did not mention on the fellow who also uses the name James, although his real last name is Matheson. I was on his show again, he admitted that he's not really that's James' cousin. Right, so, I did mention the sewage situation briefly, but he thanked me afterwards for not mentioning Wainwright Drive, which is spilled 
a third of a million gallons of raw sewage, and they still haven't fixed it. But I'm told by him and several city council members that they're working on it right now, and they're going to fix it this time. So we'll see. They do. We will compliment them. If they don't, we'll keep after them. So I think you get the general idea. We also, of course, do social media that I mentioned we're live right now, obviously, on my Facebook Live. And we do Instagram, Twitter, and um, of course, we have a blog that posts something about every day. And as Tom mentioned, I can go on about this for a long time, but we've got a lot of other stuff to do. So probably I should hand you back to West James, big country. There you go. Tom, that was really thank you for all that you did. If it wasn't important, you folks wouldn't be here tonight, would you? Give yourselves a big hand. I found out that I'm a fiduciary. You know what a fiduciary is? Go look it up. I ain't gonna tell you. Scott's one. He's proved it for 38 years. He's a fiduciary. I'm gonna try to be a fiduciary too, Scott. Go look it up. Go find out what, what that really is. At this time, if you would, let's make welcome Chris Jones and Jack Martin. Are you here, fellas? I still got my cap. I still wear it on my show. You just don't watch as much as you used to. From the Georgia Beer Company. Well, thank you, sir, and welcome, everybody. I don't think you could ask better weather as soon as the sun dropped down the breeze kick in a little bit and we might gust a little bit but i'm glad that's happening because if it wasn't imagine the gnats and and, and the heat if we didn't have the breeze so i think right now it, it feels pretty good out here right yeah well my name is chris jones i'm one of the founders and owners of the georgia beer company we are georgia's southernmost brewery and uh, we're located right here in about austin georgia and if you haven't been i i recommend that you go try us out even if you're not a beer drinker if you just want to go especially on the weekends you can get some some good food you can listen to some local music uh we have a lot of local musicians that that come through and when we opened we were one of the first breweries in the state of georgia to open uh post covid biggest biggest time frame which in, in 2020 and uh our biggest thing was we wanted to bring live music back because all these musicians they didn't have any gigs. They went almost a whole year and they weren't able to play in front of people and, and earn a living doing what they do, which is performing for folks like you. And uh, so we opened outside and in our beer garden first. And the first thing we did was try to book a band because we wanted live music to be part of that experience of, of trying to get back to some sort of normalcy. And um, yeah, we love music. Um, we also love beer. Does anybody else love beer? Now that's what I'm talking about. And guess what? 98%, 98% of the ingredients in beer, guess what it is? It's water, right? If the water doesn't taste good, do you think the beer is going to taste good? That's why we support everything that, that is going on here tonight, because without good water, you're going to have bad beer. And uh, we use Valdosta water. And a lot of people are surprised when we tell them that. They're like, what, what, goes, what kind of water do you use for your beer? We say, we use Valdosta tap water. Granted, we strip out some things with our carbon filters. We take out the chlorine mainly because I don't know if anybody's ever had chlorine in their beer, but it's not very good. So we strip out the chlorine, but you got to have the chlorine in, in any water supply to keep it safe. Um, but for us, water, water is important. And my, my partner, he would be here if he could. He had to watch his kids tonight. Uh, so he's at the house with, with his kids. But we grew up on the water, uh, whether it was down in my Zales, swimming off the or jumping off the rope swing on the Withlacoochee River or down at Keaton Beach fishing and, and swimming in the Gulf. Uh, water has been a part of my life ever since I was born. And I even took that further and in 2002, I joined the Coast Guard Reserves. And I've been in that since, uh, or since then for almost 18 years now. And so water, water quality, water, water activities is very important to me personally. And that's why I'm happy to support everything that, that the Swan River Riverkeepers are doing. And so uh, thank you to everybody who came out. And um, I think we're going to have a good time tonight. I'm excited to hear the, the finalists for tonight. And last year's finalists, they did a great job where they at. They, there he is. Give a big round of applause. Also, John and Gretchen and Tom for putting this thing on. I mean, a lot of work goes in behind the scenes. Uh, you know, we're going to have a good time tonight. But they've been working on this thing for I don't know how many months. A year. A year? Okay, 12 months. They've been working on this thing for 12 months, Meow. And uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. So thank you for coming out. 
and uh, supporting this great cause. And we're happy to be a part of it. And uh, we just hope everybody has a good time tonight. Cheers. Give a big hand, folks. If you're one of our sponsors and you're here when I call your names, please stand. The Near County News. Remain standing. Adel Outfitters. Azalea City Music Academy. Yeah. Main Box. Talk 92.1. Who is not the real James? <laughs> and Okra Paradise Farms. When I first moved here in 1997, um, I was listening to this guy named Scott James on the radio. So I had to find out if he and I were really related or not, because I am a James. Turned out he just wishes he was a James. <laughs> and I wish I was the mayor. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce our judges. Now, the thing about judges is most of the time, they don't know anything about what they're judging. You find that to be true, Scott. You enter a songwriting, you enter a songwriting contest and they usually don't know anything about music. They don't know about lyrics. They don't know about chord progression, phrasing. They don't know anything. However, this year, we are blessed with three judges that are very, very adaptive to what they do. And I'm probably going to get your name wrong, Kendra. Is that right? Kendra Bolden, born and raised in Sebring, Florida. He's had the privilege of growing up in a musical home. He was trained extensively in church music. He's performed with a vast array of venues and events, both Florida, Kansas, Illinois, Texas, Georgia. Currently, he performs throughout South Georgia, North Florida um, with Kendra Jacobs and Leslie Smith. Together, they're the um, Kendra Bolden trio. They're known for a smooth, refined, soulful sound. I'm glad to have you with us, Kendra. Thank you. You don't know this man. You don't know Valdosta. John Jeffrey Raleigh lives here in Valdosta. He's performing on stage from the tender age of eight. First in school productions and community and professional shows as a singer-songwriter. He's done shows with the like of Dr. John, Ultravox's mid year along with Arlo Guthrie. That's pretty impressive, young man. He's fronted two bands, plus performing five years um, at the prestigious Guinness International Jazz Festival with his own six piece. Now, listen to this. You tell me this is not versatile. Soul Funk Disco Band. Now, that, that's different. We're glad to have you. Glad to have you with us. Josh Duncan, he's a saxophonist from Brunswick, Georgia. Josh's musical styles are rooted in jazz, blues, and funk. He's formally educated, most recently earning his master's degree in music from BSU. Currently, Josh can be heard leading his group, the Azalea City Jazz Quartet, or often as a sideman with the Dirty Bird in the Blue and the Ed Bard Jazz Orchestra. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here as our judges. And if you would, make your way to the stage because not only are they going to judge, we're going to get to see how good they are as musicians and singers. My mistake, I thought they were going to <clears throat> thought they were going to perform together. <clears throat> the prima donnas, they've got to do it by themselves. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kendra Bolden. Good evening, everybody. Oh, I, I guess my hearing went out. I said, good evening, everybody. Okay, all right, all right. 
I just wanted to make sure I could still hear. But anyway, I am just so glad to be here this evening and to share with you. And I'm going to be very brief because we want to hear these finalists tonight. And I just want to share this um, little song with you because we all need a little change in our lives. Is that right? Say, brother, help me, please. He just winds up, he finds I'm not in me. Back down on my knees. Oh, there were times that I thought. I wouldn't last for long, but now I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long road. It's been a long time coming, but I know change will. Not too bad there, Mr. Bowles. <laughs> now, I think with a little practice, you might be, you know, you might be able to do something with that. I hear you're going to do a little Seeger, a little Allman Brothers, yeah. all at the same time. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> kind of like a vigilant twist. You're going, to, you're going to talk to the dummy and drink water at the same time, right? Uh -oh. Folks, would you put your hands together and make welcome Mr. Josh Duncan. Hello, hello.
Yeah, we're going to do a little um, Hoagy Carmichael song, one of the great American songwriters. This is Up the Road. Up the lazy river on the old mill run, that lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun. Linger in the shade of a kind old tree, throw away your troubles, dream a dream with me. Up the lazy river where the robin song awaits the bright new morning, we can move along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. Up the lazy river, how happy you can be. Yeah, up the lazy river with me. I've been waiting for this, JJ. Really? Really. Anybody that knows music in Valdosta knows JJ Roll. Most likely, like, even named John Jeffrey, but everybody knows him by JJ. I'm get set up. I urge you, if you're not a member of Walls, you need to, and you need to tell folks about Walls. Like I say, I didn't know until John Porterman came to my office to came to the studio anything about what they're doing. And as an avid fisherman, I needed to know. So I've been telling folks about it. Because I appreciate being able to go to the river out on the water to be clean, no trash. I don't have to worry about all this other junk that goes on out there. And when I see you, I've gotten to the point now, John, you'll appreciate this. If I'm down near water and I see a cup or a bottle of anything, I'll pick that trash up and take it with me. That's what you can do to help too. That's the biggest thing you can do is when you leave the water, you see trash, take it with you, even if it's not yours. Take it with you, make it yours. Be a fiduciary when it comes to our rivers. JJ, you don't let me sing with you? Oh, everybody gets to sing with it. I'm just, I'm just the one with the mic. How many people listen to the Kraken in the morning on Monday night? He won't be there Monday morning. Or for the next two weeks. Kraken has left. How many people know he also owns the SOS dive shop? You know where he's going? He's leaving tonight on a plane for Egypt. For two weeks in Egypt. I didn't know they had places to dive over there in Egypt. But that's what he's going to be doing for two weeks, teaching, teaching diving and sending pictures back. So go to his, go to his Facebook page. Dave Stone McCracken. 
you can follow him over there in Egypt because he's teaching people to die. Are we ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, <laughs> sit back, lay back, relax, put your hands together for Valdosta's very own J.J. Rowe. Yes, one, two. Okay, well, now it'll take me a bit to get into this, okay, because uh, I have to make sure everything works. That's what happens when nobody will play with you. Oh, and I just want to make a correction. Uh, we did do a song together, not because we're pre but we're pre predominance, <laughs> although we are. But it's because, you know, these, the other two are so busy. It was hard to find out. Me, I'm free as a bird. You hear that, Georgia Beer Company? I'm free as a bird. <laughs> you want the voice? Can you hear it now? They want it louder for some reason. You guys can sing along on the chorus. I know you know it. Pretty mama's on the dance, 
Give it up one more time for JJ. Any Lounge High football fans in this, here tonight? Lounge High football fans. Just so you know, they lost to Walton in overtime today. However, they scored two touchdowns in the final 38 seconds to tie the game up. Any Moultrie Packer fans in the house? We might we be thinking this marriage, you know that, don't you? Most folks know me either from BSU football, Lounge football, or 92.9. And love makes a man do some strange things. Whoever thought a Viking would marry a Packer and move, and I'm being picked at because I'm moving in November to Moultrie. And they, they're giving me a hard time saying, you know, you're moving to Moultrie. What they don't realize is Vikings go pillaring and plundering. And I've already moved into Moultrie or moving over there, and I've already captured their most prized position. They don't know they've been infiltrated and already taken over by Vikings. Um, do we have any elected officials in the house tonight? Are there any elected officials? Anybody want to be an elected official? At this time, if we would, Mr. Bobby McKenzie. Put your hands together for Mr. Bobby. Hello, uh, as they said, uh, my name is Bobby. Uh, what I do with walls uh, is uh, multiple two, uh, things at the moment. Uh, but right now, I've just uh, I just retired from the Air Force after 22 years. And the, uh, the Air Force Department of Defense offers a program where you can apply to be an intern at local businesses or nonprofit organizations. And uh, I applied to be an internship program here at Walls and they accepted me for the past four months. So I've been uh, doing a whole array of things that they've been uh, tasking me to do as an intern. So uh, that's what I'm up here to do and talk about all that. So uh, one of the many things I've done is uh, we've, we've come across uh, uh, some, uh, some technology where we've been uh, mapping the river. So if, you, uh, if you've been wanting to kayak or you've been uh, want to be familiar with the rivers and what they look like, well, we got some uh, some good 360 cameras and a, and a mapping platform that we partnered up. And we kayak down the rivers, we map it, we send it to the partners and they, uh, they process it and put it into the, their platform. And it's basically the equivalent of Google Street Views. So have you ever seen Google Street Views when you click on it? So to this, uh, probably in two weeks, three weeks time, uh, we've mapped uh, almost 70 river miles. So there's 70 river miles on the Lapaha, uh, the Wintlacoochee and the Little River that you can go on and you can take a virtual tour. You can even uh, put it to your smartphone, put it in a virtual reality uh, device and you can uh, take a virtual reality tour on it. It does uh, multiple things, get you familiar with the rivers, uh, get you aware of what's going on ecologically and uh, you know, uh, ecotourism. So. That's uh, one big project we've been working on. Another thing I've been working on is uh, is uh, trash. Been pulling a lot of trash out of the river. Uh, big country said when you go to the river and you leave, you see some trash, uh, take it with you, make it yours. Well, uh, I along with the other walls members have done that uh, quite extensively. There is a silver uh, 
Chevy, Chevy Silverado short bed with a tailgate down, completely full of trash. Uh, six volunteers last week, just last Saturday, six volunteers, two and a half hours, pulled 152 pounds of trash. Imagine that, 152 pounds of plastic and styrofoam cups and to-go containers out of the river in one occasion. We did that on four occasions this year, April, June, and July of this year. Maize trash washed on down the river. All together, we pulled out 758 pounds of trash from one single specific location on the Withlacoochee, Sugar Creek. It is the equivalent of seven parking spots. So we went out there and kind of seven parking spots and you laid out trash. That's area wise. That's how much trash we pulled out of the rivers. Thank you. But there's there's thousands and thousands of more pounds of trash that get washed down the river. So please, 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 if you see trash, it's not yours, make it yours. Take it with you, please. And another thing was uh, working on the trails. We got uh, Dan Phillips over here sitting down, but he pointed uh, a lot of the uh, water trail signs. That's the informational signs that you see at the waterways, tells you uh, your water trail distances, uh, points of interest along the way, uh, what's good to see, what's not good to see, uh, and how long it's going to take you to get uh, out of your kayak and get back to the truck, go home, and uh, cool off. Uh, we planted uh, every sign on the Winklacoochee, Little River, and Alapaha. We finished that up uh, last week, I believe. That's, that's river signs for informational and on the road. So you have uh, informational signs. There's actually one over here in the corner up against that uh, uh, fence back there. Uh, it's one of your road signs from the, from the road. It helps you uh, navigate where the, the waterways are. And John up here, he's got an informational sign as an example. Right here, I just, boom. All right. So uh, I've also done water quality testing. There's a whole team, there's a whole effort, uh, way more people than me, many more people than me that do the water quality testing. I know we uh, test many locations along the Lapaha, the Little River, and the uh, Wiklacuchi for water quality. We mainly do, the, mainly do that on Thursdays, and the results come in on Friday when we get those posted. Um, what else? Oh, outings. So we do a lot of outings. So we do full moon paddles out of Bank Slate. Woo, we got one tomorrow, so tomorrow is a full moon. Fun fact for that is uh, uh, tomorrow's full moon is a full sturgeon moon. That's what it's uh, official from the Farmer's Almanac. But also, it is a blue moon. So you have a blue moon, two types. You have one where there's a uh, two full moons in the same month. And also a seasonal blue moon where you have four full moons in one season. So you've been waiting on that occasion where it says once in a blue moon. Oh, <laughs> tomorrow's your time. you got to fess up, pay up, because uh, tomorrow's your blue moon. So come on out with us. Uh, Banks Lake is very popular. We, uh, we, uh, we usually get about 25 people, 30 people out there on the lakes with glow sticks, flashlights, low output lights, paddle around, see a, a killer sunset, awesome moonrise, and of course we got bats. We got lots and lots of bats just coming out at, uh, at, at dusk, and it's really cool to see some real National Geographic type stuff. We also do a, another monthly outing on the rivers between uh, Okie Fidoki, Little River, Alapaha, Swanee River, uh, with Lacucci. Uh, we have one coming up in September 18th. We're going to go down uh, the Swanee River, down Telford Springs, along the uh, uh, Swanee River Wilderness Trail. We have the uh, river camps along the way. So there is plenty of things to do. Plenty of things to do. So if you love kayaking, uh, if you love uh, doing things for uh, as a hobby, I said the river mapping, uh, we can paddle it. We can hand it off to you if you're good with uh, computers and programming, and you can process that data, those uh, files, and help upload them, upload them into the platform and Google Maps. Uh, if you're not, if kayaking is not your thing, obviously we got the songwriting contest. So if you uh, you know, if music's your thing, we got all kinds of different avenues for you to be involved and to help uh, exercise your talent. So with that, I will pass that on. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Now for what most all of you have come here for, the singer-songwriter contest. These folks are competing for recording time, 
for money prizes. It's very big to them. They'll be performing original songs. And I've talked to John and the judges, of course, will be judging and we'll find out at the end who the winner is, first, second, third, and so on. I want to add something to that because 92.9 WAAC and WGOV, the Nielsen ratings and the uh, Arbitron ratings has recently come out. And we hold by far almost two thirds of the market share in a 40 county area for listeners. So it means we have the most listened to radio stations there is in South Georgia and North Florida. Give my cup to Kev Rivers Radio a hand. So artists, be aware that during the night, the lovely Miss Jackie and myself will be listening to each and every song. And the song that we pick as the DJ's favorite song will be played on my program. Guaranteed. I'll have your song on. Now, it may not be the number one song. It might not be the one the judges pick, but what we call the DJ's pick. Because we had an interesting conversation today about, about songs and popular songs and some songs that were that were number one songs that I just didn't care for. And other songs that, you know, everybody has their own favorite songs. So if yours just happens to be my favorite, with the consensus of that lovely lady there, it's going to be played on 92.9, All American Country. Our first artist, Rachel Hillman from Tallahassee, Florida. She spent her childhood in Fort Lauderdale. She moved to Tallahassee when she was 13. She joined courses, bands, dance groups, theater troops, poetry slams to find her people and to develop a better sense of self. In 2015, she left Florida State. Good choice. And the opera dreams are behind to learn about American folk traditions like blues and jazz. In the process, she found a career in music and a love for jazz fusion guitar a passion for photography and a network of artists and creatives that get stronger every day. And as a, as a songwriter myself, I prefer to let the singer or the songwriter tell you about their song. So I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm not going to introduce a song. I'm going to let them introduce their own song. But with a soulful jazz song called Gossiping of Butterflies, this Rachel Hillman. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I just want to especially um, thank Josh Duncan for telling me about this con contest. And um, I'm just really excited to be visiting Thaldasa for the first time and learning. I've learned so much more about the Swanee River Basin than I ever thought um, I might think about on an average day. I've been to one festival by the Swanee River, and I uh, just went to the last day of it. And, I saw that the community was so close together and I, I thought, man, I just hope that one day I can find a group that, that really, you know, I feel that kind of support. Um, and that's how I feel whenever I, I'm in an Irish traditional jam or I'm in a blues group and there's people playing blues music together and um, you feel it in churches and you feel it in all kinds of different spaces. It just, you can't really, it's nothing tangible about it. You just know when you feel it, you know when you feel community. Um, so Gossiping of Butterflies is about taking all of that fear um, and just kind of moving past it and just throwing it into the river and, and knowing that as time flows by, so do your fears and, and you're going to grow and you're going to make move forward. I know a lot of us have a Himalayan salt lamp in our house. <laughs> um, uh, some people will get them because they think that they're going to really these negative ions into their house and they're going to get good mood and there was somebody who went and took, took it to the test and and they found that in fact there are no ions being released <laughs> by those lamps um but there are negative ions released at waterfalls and really splashy waters and beaches and places like that and so um i just kind of wanted to speak on that as well in the song and talk about the waterfalls on your cheeks as you experience emotion when you're crying uh, just the feeling of letting out an emotion can be a catharsis in its own so now it's all very esoteric and i'm just gonna move on into the song now i have the wonderful josh rivers accompanying me he's on 
our record as well. And uh, it's just really been a delight working with, with him at FSU. And, and since, since then, um, I graduated last year. I came back to school after I was out of school for a few years. And uh, that's a whole lot of pros. But um, I'm just really excited to share this song with you. And I'm really glad that Josh could join me today to play. It was, uh, I found out literally this morning he was free. So I was like, yes, this is great. Okay. So with all that, this is the gossiping of butterflies. Thank 
Give it up for Rachel Hillman. If you're still eating something to eat, you have until nine o'clock, or you'll have to walk down the street. Abachi Highway is leaving at nine, so if you like something to uh, eat over there, you need to go there before they leave at nine o'clock. Yep, taking the wallet out. There we go. Time to go get some beef. Up next from Adel, Georgia. Hey, got it. Dave is a songwriter turned musician, or is it musician turned songwriter? Songwriter, songwriter turned musician. Okay. Of course, he's got a real good guitar there for old bluegrass player. Probably one of the finest guitars made back there. It's a Martin guitar. Got to get it tuned up. You ready? Yeah. Give a big hand. Dave Roddick. Here, here, here we go. All right. My name is Dave. I got a song I wrote at my lunch break because I got an email from the Turner Center about they needed more songs. And so I'm doing a sound and I'm writing a song, so do not consider this song for any kind of content. Okay. 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 I wrote this in dad, dad tuning. I had three more strings I'd write it in dad, dad, dad tuning. But uh, I don't, I got six of them. That was a good song, that probably should win, you know what I'm saying? Swanee, that river's running high, and I'm gazing wild as the swan tears in the sky. Man, oh man, oh man, a tear, swimming with the tide, limestone on the banks, rain trickling from the sky. Riding off the moon, being too worried, losing my
Sound mind singer songwriter. Our next artist hails from Atlanta, Georgia. He has three of six children, born and right. He grew up here in Valdosta, going to the Swanee as often as he could. He is a carpenter, a Lutheran. A touring musician, loves to play music, loves to write, loves to sing, loves to keep his 15-year-old brother involved, but he's got him playing drums with him tonight. He's written a kind of bluesy rock country song called Dark Water. He gets set up, he'll tell you all about it. Don't forget about your highway leaves in about 10 minutes. JJ to the rescue. That was a good song, JJ. Yeah, That one? Yeah. If you would put your hands together and make welcome Jimmy Davis. Oh. All right. 
I'm Jimmy Davies. This is my guitar, Bruce. And this is my little brother, Mylon. He's 15 years old. Give it up for him. As the man said, I grew up here in Valdosta, Georgia, uh, as did Mylon. Uh, Mylon lives in Moultrie, Georgia now. I live in Atlanta. Uh, this song was all about us growing up on the swing. The song is called Dark Water. Good song, give it up. Jimmy Davies. Sweet William. Sweet William. There comes Sweet William.
You need a chair. Sweet William needs a chair. While he's getting a chair, he's lived in Palatka, Florida for over three decades. His original songs written over the span of 50 years cover multiple genres. His subjects include love and war with a heavy dose of the blues. Sounds to me like married and divorced and just in a um, court afterwards. On August 26, 2018, he competed in the North Central Florida Blues Regional Challenge. He did it solo and he won. He represented North Florida in the, in the 2018 Memphis Blues Challenge. His acoustic finger styles weaves through stories of his life with a simple feel of storytelling blues. His given name, Billy Enos. But everybody down around Palatka, they call him Sweet William. To tell you about this song he's written called Flat Bottom Boots. Folks, give it up. Big round of applause for Sweet William. Two, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. 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 Nice to be here up in uh, Valdosta with all you walls folks down in the uh, black of Florida. We have the St. Tom's River. We do a lot of work with the river keepers down there. And uh, uh, it's nice to uh, come up here and uh, visit Valdosta again this year. I have uh, brought a couple of friends because it's always a lot of fun uh, to participate with my good friend Lori Baxter and my good friend uh, Lee Kelly. And uh, this song is about this song is about the uh, flat bottom wood burning steamboats that uh, rode the Suwannee River. And uh, the first one, of course, was Captain Tucker and the Madison. And you can see the hull at times up there in uh, uh, White Springs where he scuttled it. Woke up on the swan where the water flowed like black silver, cradled by the river, and worked his flat bottom boat, or tow that bark and lift that bag. Pull it in the shore. Captain Tucker and the Madison loaded down like a country store. Made pigs, eggs, and chickens. Bacon, tallow, pies, and gums. And what he lacked on this trip, he'd have on his next run. Because he woke up on the swan 
where the water flowed like black silk and cradled by the river. He worked his life out of boat on the Madison Road, that Swanee River. So Tucker was called to fight. The Southern boys said they needed him, said their cause was just and right. But before he went to Virginia, the Madison sunk that Union boat. Then he scuttled her up in White Springs, and the Madison sailed no more. Come on, Lee. Well, those flat bottom twin stack double decker steamships after the Civil War. They came and worked the Swanee River, Old Town Cedar Key, the Springs Gulf Shores. And people came from around the world to heal in her black silk waters, soaking up white sulfur springs and hoping for the cure. He woke up on the Swanee where the water flowed like black silk and rolled in the river. He worked his life on the boat. Well, ride those tap fed steamboats. Ask me those double stacks. The Louisa, the Paul Uli, of course, the Swanee River Bell, the last flat bottom tied up back in 1923. The first Captain Tucker's Madison, the last of the city of Hawkins built. They woke up on the sun where the water flowed like black silk and cradled by the river. They worked their flat bottom boat. They woke up on the swan where the water flowed like black silk and cradled by the river. They worked their flat bottom boat and cradled by the river. They worked their flat bottom boat. Thank you very much. Go wild, yeah. Give it up, a sweet William. She's from Valdosta, Georgia. Graduate of the University of Georgia. Her name is Catherine Ball. Said she'd been away from South Georgia and North Florida way, way too long. Grew up on a 200 acre farm that her grandmother had. And grandmother used to tell her, you can't go near the water till you learn how to swim. So she was up in Athens and Second heaven, South of North Carolina, Tar Hill was first heaven, so Georgia second heaven. Got to miss some home, decided she's gonna write herself a song about it. While they're getting ready, got a question for you. Don't Google it, okay? Don't Google it, and I'll tell you between the next artists the answer. What is the largest city? Good, John. What is the largest city in the largest county in the largest state east of the Mississippi? The largest city in the largest county in the largest state east of the Mississippi. Now I'm talking, I'm talking land wise, I'm not talking population, land wise. We'll find out. After Miss Ball comes and sings for us. You ready? 
I'm going to have some money. He knows. He knows the answer. Hmm. I got without telling anybody the answer. Without telling anybody the answer, how do you know that? And I have a lot of friends. So do I. So do I. All of them from we won't go out how I know all of them. Actually, all my my dad's folks are from Maynard, Georgia. The current sheriff of um, anyway, she's already yes. Anybody know what the largest city and the largest county and the largest state is? Mississippi. What is it, Scott? Waycross, Georgia. Georgia is the largest land wide landmass state east of the Mississippi. Ware County, land wise, is the largest county in the state. Of course, that would make Waycross the largest city. Of course, now the sheriff, you see, you know a lot of folks over there with the current sheriff is my first cousin. So if you get in trouble, let me know. He won't help you. The lights off. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. They'll get them straight. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to sing for us something in the water, Miss Catherine Ball. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Let me know, can you hear us all the way in the back on the mic? All right, let it up, turn it up, turn it up. Thank you so much. We're keep 
the volume. You just let me know when it's right. Keep, keep it up. Keep it up. Up, 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 keep it. Yeah. I'll let you know because we can't hear as well as you guys can out there. JJ, I'm going to check, but uh, I can't really hear myself. So you can help me with the monitor. I'm not very loud is what everybody's telling me. So yeah, we just need to keep cranking it. We're going to get it, y'all. Check, 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 check. One, two, three, four, check. All right, guys, I need your help. Check, check. Better? Keep going, keep going. All right, yeah. All right, you think we're pretty good? Thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. It is such an honor to be here at the fourth annual Swanee Riverkeeper Songwriters Festival. Like our MC said, my name is Catherine Ball and I'm originally from Valdosta. My mother actually worked at the First State Bank and ran the mortgage department there that's now the Turner Center. Um, <laughs> and I've been gone from Valdosta for close to 15 years. I'm, I'm a graduate of Lowndes High School, Valdosta State University, and the University of Georgia. And I have been gone for close to 15 years. And when I was finishing graduate school at UGA, my heart missed my home. At that point, I had been away for about eight years. And my story with the Swanee is that my great grandparents actually owned the 200 acre farm on the Swanee. And my grandmother grew up there and the Conservancy now owns about 180 acres of that piece of property on the river. And they farmed and I am from that river, from that land. And my great grandfather was actually the one who told my grandmother, don't get near the water till you learn how to swim. And she is 81 years old and still doesn't know how to swim. So <laughs> this song that I wrote has so many meanings and so much depth to who I am as a person. And it is such an honor to be able to share this with you guys tonight. So sit back and relax. We are so glad to be here. This is my guitar player, Scotty Nicholson from Athens and Derek Warren on bass, both from Athens. And we are so pleased to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you so much. Something in the water, something in the water, something in this God sinking place. I don't know, but it hurts to show. And I hope it's for it's for a friend. I don't know what it hurts. 
first to show and I hope it's low it's for the grave First of all, we need to give this gentleman a a very special man because he is a special, he's a teacher, special education for the Swanee County School System. Not just a teacher, a special education teacher. That's having a heart. That's having a heart. He and his wife have six children. They live on a family farm, a small town in O'Brien. He plays guitar and sings in a band called the Black River Heart Harvesters. There's a spring down there called Convict Spring. There's a lot of different stories about it. And his name is K. Well, this is KJ uh, KJ Wingate. And KJ has taken some of the stories and written a song about Convict Spring. Why don't you tell us about it before you sing? Before you sing the song, tell us just a little bit about it. I'll get it to you now. <laughs> so he wants it. He wants it. Why are you telling me? He's, he's, want, he's wanting the mic. Doesn't he know when you give a DJ a mic, we just like to talk? I should have been a lawyer. Well, put your hands together. Okay, Jay, win game. Hey, thank you very much. I've never gotten the full DJ treatment on my name before. I appreciate that. A lot. So, uh, my band, Black River Harvesters, has played at, uh, at Georgia Beer Company. Those dudes leave already? Man, <laughs> come on. We want to go back. It was raining last time. We had to play inside and be quiet, and we want to be loud outside. Okay, Georgia Beer Company, have us back. Thank you. All right, so there's a place called Convict Spring near where I grew up in Swanee County. I'm from Swanee County. Okay. In Florida, okay. So Con Convict Spring is not, it's not the best spring. And that's probably why it was selected to uh, be, well, Convict Spring. So the road crews would use that as a camping area, which is my understanding. And also prison labor built a lot of the structures that are around in Con Convict Spring. So that's how it got the name. It, what, sorry? All of Georgia. All of Georgia, yes. So, <laughs> um, there's a place called River Rendezvous Campground that's there now, and you can go and take your RV in there, and they have pigeon races. 
and uh, an old school bowling alley and old chicken houses and you set up your own bowling pins and stuff. It's a pretty cool place. So uh, I wrote this song when I was a band called Wild Azalea Brothers. And uh, it's from the perspective of a convict on a road crew. And if any of you were raised up Southern Baptist, maybe you had the Blue Baptist hymnal, hymnal or Old Country Church where you had the call and response, you know, stuff in parentheses that you say back. So the chorus of this has call and response. And Rachel Grubb is another songwriter who was supposed to be in this. She felt sick this morning, did not come. So be praying for her. She was supposed to do the call and response demonstration for you. And, uh, but now I'll do it. All right, so there's in the, in the chorus is that water, that water's cold. You go, that water's cold. My soul is clean. My soul is clean of streets of gold, streets of gold. The night I'll dream, night I'll dream. I can't do that part. The Rachel was going to do that. But someday we'll know that world serene. Governor owns my body, but my Savior set me free. All right, you got it all. You just say what I say when that part comes around. The rest of the stuff, don't say what I say. That'll clutter it up. My old life was filled with sin, and I stumbled and fallen, but I only have myself for that to blame. Now I walk the narrow path, around my bed and spring my bath. Convict spring is where I wash away my shame. That water's cold, my soul is clean. Of streets of gold, tonight I'll dream, someday I'll do. That world serene. Governor of my body, but my Savior set me free. Spend my days chained to my friends, digging ditch to make amends, disallowed by my convictions to be free. They took all our worldly things, but they gave you this convict's brain. Mama, be so proud, they named it after me. That water's cold. My soul is clean of streets of gold. Tonight I'll dream. Someday I'll know that world to be. Governor owns my body, but my savior set me free. Be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Don't you slip into that cave, or it may be your watch we pray. There are places just not meant for man to see. If God wanted you to know where that misty water flows, he'd have given you some air down there to breathe. That water's cold, my soul is clean. Up streets of gold, that I'll dream. Someday I'll know that will soon be. The narrows my body, but my Savior's a good dream. The narrows my body, but my Savior set me free. Lord's always fit to grant my poor soul clemency. Seriously, go to Georgia Beer Company and tell them, hey, that dude is up there and he wants to come back. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Jay Wingate, give it up for him, folks.
Her name is Kathy Lou Gilman. She's from Kingsland, Georgia. She's a singer, songwriter, storyteller who writes original songs, short stories, and fables. She has performed in venues in Georgia and Florida at the Artwork in Neptune Beach, St. Mary's in the Little Theater. This is her second foray into the Swanee River Songwriters Contest. If you would, our last contestant of the night, put your hands together and make her welcome here, Kathy Lou Gilman. My name is Kathy Lou, and I'm very thankful to be here today. I want to also say I'm very thankful for the people that are the river keepers. I want to give you a clap, first of all. All the people out there taking care of the land, taking care of the rivers, and that's why we're here. It's because we believe in taking care of the land. There was a tribe of people that also believed in that, the earlier river keepers. And some people call them the Timokan, some call them the Timokwan. And uh, this tribe of people love the land. They believed in elders teaching the young and teaching about taking care of the land and being thankful for the bounty that the rivers had. And as you know the story of what happened, but there's a happy ending in all this that now we have river keepers that are taking on the legend of what the Timucuan set out to do. And this song is called The Legend of the Swanee. Tell me if you can hear me first. would make your blood run cold. Of a peaceful tribe, happy to be serving their God on the farm. But in a corner, she's taught the young and the old to give thanks for the bounty the rivers would hold. They work together, brave and free, to protect the river on this one. Take over the land for king and country. They natives, they're killed one by one. The last chief left a curse where the rivers run. Since then, the swan has seen a share of war, though I never knew what the fighting was for. Now the Swanee is peaceful, they can breathe once again, as the hardworking river keepers, women and men. Now the Swanee is peaceful, they can breathe once again, because of the hardworking river keepers, women and men. Thank you very much. Happy Lou.
Give it up one more time for Kathy Lou Gilman. Now put your hands together for all of our artists tonight. How many folks know who Tom D. Hall is? Considered country music's best storyteller. He passed away in the early hours this morning at the age of 85. And if you're listening to 92.9 Monday night, we plan on doing a tribute to Tom D. Hall, but he was one of the greatest songwriters of all time. He could write from anything about, and most of the stories he wrote about were all true stories, a lot like our artists tonight who wrote a lot of the songs about their own personal experiences. He wrote about getting cut, getting a guy almost stabbed, well, stab, trying to stab him with a knife when he was in the army in Germany to a friend of his um, who was owed $40 for having to dig the grave for the man that owed it. Just all sorts of things. Old dogs and children and watermelon wine. I like beer. I like, yeah, I like beer. <laughs> he did. He liked beer. Miss Dixie, his wife, preferred, preferred the finer wines. Now, our judges is going to have to give them a few minutes so they can tally up the score. And remember, when uh, when all this is over, and you won't know who unless you're listening to 92.9, but um, Miss Jackie and I will pick our the DJ's favorite song. And uh, no, it didn't matter whether it was the judge's favorite or, or their least favorite. It was whatever we think was our favorite song. that will be played on my program on the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, while the judges are tallying up their scores, we need to know a little bit more about the Swanee River Keepers. Welcome back right here one more time, Mr. John Quarterman. Thank you, Wes. And I'd like to thank everybody for helping us hold this festival during these somewhat difficult conditions. You may have heard there's some kind of virus pandemic going on. You notice I'm wearing some extra protection here. I'm sure this will help this personal flotation device. Now, um, I actually don't get to use this as much as I would like because I spend a lot more time paddling a keyboard than I do a boat. But I get out on the river when I can. Uh, advocacy is mostly what I do that has to do with a wide range of issues. So wide, I actually have to use a cheat sheet here. You've all heard about water quality testing. And uh, I'm going to do a little bragging here on the organization. There's a whole committee developed, devoted to that. Our water quality testing chair can't be here tonight. She had something else to do. Susie Hall, uh, Bobby McKenzie's a tester, several other people here, Scotty and Sear, Jay are testers, and, and so forth. Okay, last year we were the uh, volunteers of the year for the entire state of Georgia for water quality testing. So that's good. And through this water quality testing, We've determined something, um, there's all sorts of fables that grow up about the rivers. In Florida, a lot of people believe when there's heavy rains, Georgia releases the waters from the Swanee Sill in the Okefenokee and floods Florida. Okay, actually the sill gates are open all the time. So, you know, my fable, not true. Another thing everybody tends to believe is when there's any contamination to lift the Pitch River, it's foul Well, that used to be mostly true. It's not as true. It isn't completely fixed. But one thing we've discovered through the testing, there are in fact frequent contamination episodes after heavy rains, but where it's mostly coming from is cattle manure out of Brooks County, Georgia. And we did this in cooperation with the state of Florida, Florida Department of Environmental Protection Division, who did DNA tests and uh, chemical tracers, and it's uh, ruminants. And, you know, okay, there's only one giraffe in Lowndes County. That's not enough. It's a wild adventures. Yeah. And, um, okay, it could be beer, but if that were the case, why is the Alapaha River always way lower when this happens? We're way less contaminated. The only ruminants numerous enough are cows. And there's more than 10,000 cows, dairy and beef in Brooks County. We also did our own DNA test for a different source, which is more specific than cows. Also hogs, though. There's wild hogs by the river. So we're finding out stuff. Okay. Um, uh, wastewater, in other words, sewage. You heard about that. And believe me, we're going to go about that one for several years. We have for many years. And uh, there are people in the government of this fair city in which we are currently at the moment 
who believe that I personally caused the Georgia Environmental Protection Division to levy a consent order on the city of Dallas for $112,000 for the chronic sewage spills and to require them to do a wide range of things, including testing on West Beachy River water quality three times a week over 40 river miles. Yep. Now, I'm not gonna tell them that it wasn't actually wrong personally. I did have something to do with it as did a lot of other people associated with laws, but it was also 12 Florida counties, elected officials at the county, state, and national level in both states, and things were improving fine. Uh, another thing that was mostly us is until um, it was 2020, the state of Georgia did not actually report to the public sewage spills. Any of the um, permitted uh, wastewater uh, outfits like Caldas equipment, Tiffin, Adel, so forth, that had a spill had to report to the state. The state did not publish those reports. I, I got to where I would send a request to the state of Georgia, like after every rain, send me an updated spreadsheet. They got tired of that, particularly when I kept pointing out um, Florida publishes this, Alabama publishes these reports, and we kept signing up more organizations to we got 30 organizations in Georgia and Florida saying, could you publish these reports? Georgia and finally they did. So for both that and the consent order on Georgia, when I mention this to other river keepers, that consent order in particular, they always go, well, who sued? And there was no lawsuit. No, no, really, who brought the lawsuit? There was no lawsuit. Well, how did you do it? We nagged them into it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's all politics all the time. Um, yes, they're still deliberating. It could take a while because we've got so many good musicians. Okay, so um, I have to say a word about Riverkeeper and what it means. I'm going to burst in for a moment. If you haven't taken an opportunity to look at our silent auction items and bid on some of them, we're going to be closing up that bidding as soon as the judges are done. So you need to run over there and see if there's anything you want to bid on. There's music lessons, there's charms, there's original artwork, there's food, there's clothing, there's seashells, you name it. Go over there and find something great. Thanks. You know, bid, I'll go over and bid on it too. Okay, she outranks me. She's the executive director. Yeah, well, so... Uh, there is only one Somani Riverkeeper, that's me. It's a staff position in the project at Walls Watershed Coalition. What's Walls? Walls is a group of people from originally South Georgia, also North Florida. We expanded and now it encompasses the entire 10,000 square miles of the Somani River Basin. We started in 2012. One of the big things was, you guessed it, not also sewage. There were other things. And the original board was basically from Lowndes County and Tift County with Tifton. Now we have board members, our board president is from Pine Mountain, way over on the Alabama border almost. And we have another board member from Jacksonville, Florida. We're looking for more. You gotta be a member first, come on the committee and we'll be happy to find you a way. Okay, so what do we do? Drinkable, swimmable, fishable water. Now, as I say, there's only one Swanee River Keeper, but any of you can be members, any of you are. And finalists, you are members. That's one of the perks. Yay. Also, if you haven't got your free drinks, is Four House still here? Each finalist gets one free drink. Tell them your name, they'll give you a free drink. Yes, they're still deliberating. Um, so, as I say, we there's so much uh, stuff that we do that I have to look at the list. Corporate agriculture, you heard me talk about Bill Gates and water withdrawals. There's more than that, but that's enough to give you an idea. We are for solar power. We are among the groups that helped get the Georgia Public Service Commission to require Georgia Power to buy more solar power than it wanted to several times. That's why Georgia is leapfrogged ahead from its formerly very low position of solar power. Um, liquid natural gas. I asked Bobby the other day, so what do you know about the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission or FEMSA or the Department of Energy, Office of Fossil Energy? What? Yes, and probably none of you have ever heard of hardly any of that, but I know far too much about it. And yes, it affects you. Explosive bomb trucks, uh, 600 uh, atmospheres 
liquid natural gas rolling down I-75 right by Lounge High School businesses and other things uh, shouldn't be happening. Okay, um, I could mention the phosphate mines. I will mention the titanium strip mine proposed right next to the Okefenokee Swamp. You can find all this stuff. Go to walls.net, www.als.net, walls.net, or somaliriverkeeper.org. That's easier for you to remember. Probably is easier for me. And you can uh, send a message to the Georgia Environmental Protection Division saying, please reject those five permits, the applications sent in by the miners. Okay, there's all sorts of stuff like this. Um, toll roads in Florida, it's a huge thing. We're against any new toll roads that are unnecessary. They want, want to run one right up US 19. It's hardly any traffic. There's no need for a toll road. In Florida, there's a thing that hasn't made it to Georgia yet. We're working on it, which is a petition to put on the ballot for a constitutional amendment for a right to clean water. And, um, you know, for example, in Georgia, did you know we have a right to hunt and fish in Georgia? It's a constitutional right. And you probably didn't even know that, but we do since I think it was 2006. Okay, tell me this. What good is that if the fish and the wildlife don't have clean water and air in which to live? What good is that if the water is polluted and the hunters are getting diseases from it? So we need a right to clean water. And um, you might think, well, we've got all sorts of laws and regulations. Unfortunately, they're all tilted towards those who want to exploit the water without paying enough attention to contaminating it. So in Florida, for those of you from Florida, please go to fl5.org, fl5.org, and please sign the petition to get on the ballot the right to clean water. And you will see it eventually in Georgia in a year or two. We're working on it. Judges, are you getting close? Should I keep talking? You're done. They're done. Okay, you're saved. I can talk for hours about this. I do, but they're done. Are you going to bring your decisions up here to West James? And I also need to see them. So uh, Josh is going to hand the plaques to West James as he reads out. For the winners. And don't forget to bid on the silent auction. Gretchen, did you want to announce the close of the silent auction now or after the winners? People are still bidding. So let's do the winners and then we'll announce the close of the silent auction. JJ, you have to tell him. Oh, y'all can argue about it. Okay, JJ admits that Wes is the voice of announcements. So, JJ or Josh, be ready within their plaques. And remember, first prize gets $300 and a $300 value of studio time plus this nifty plaque. So, here you go, Joe. Wes. As the announcer, we're going to do John Ross first or Dustin first? John first. Yeah, sure. Now everyone gets a plaque, right? My first year doing this, so I don't know. They're going to start with John Ross. Okay, for American Folk Revival, Kathy Lou Gilman. Blues, rock, country, Jimmy Davis.
For folk, Billy, Enos, Mr. Speed Wind. For folk country, K. J. Wingate. Correct. David Rodder. For Rock and Blues, Catherine Ball. For Stolen Jazz, Rachel Hillman. And now, <laughs> for the song submitted from the outside, Jimmy Davis. Well, the song submitted from the inside and fifty dollars. KJ Wingate. Ladies and gentlemen, our overall winner, first prize, goes to. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Goes to Sweet William Billy Ennis. John.
Can I have all board and committee members, please? All board and committee members and volunteers. All board members, all volunteers, all committee members. Let's go get a picture. All board members, all volunteers, all committee members. John, get in there with him. So, um, I'm going to take the payments for the top silent auction over at the blue, um, tent. So, I'll have circled who's the winners and come and take it. And now, and now, Sweet William, you'll be back up here to play. Come play us a song. Sweet We're going to find out. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I never Be sure to tune in at Heaven Bound in the morning from 6 until 10, the best in Southern Country and Bluegrass Gospel. And before y'all leave, I'll tell you, as I tell every night when I sign off and every Sunday morning, God bless you. I'll see you here, there, or in the air. Woo yeah. Woo Miss Chappie, John wants to know if you'll come get a picture. Yes. We've heard about you now. I want to see you. Well, he keeps saying spouse, but that's not until November the 6th. Provided I don't run a packer off. I don't run a bike in off. Now we can see you in the light. Got a question. Yes, sir. Why? How did you get the name Sweet William? I uh, I played the bass for a, a guy out of Jacksonville. Uh, Papa Ned Johnson for years, and uh, he named me Sweet William. Of course, Sweet William's a flower, and some people think I'm a blooming idiot. 56,000 comedians out of a job, and you're trying to audition. I hear you. Tell you what, I promise not to tell them your jokes if you'll sing us some of this song. <laughs> Check one, two. Well, my banjo player is not going to make it, but uh, we'll, do it. we'll try and do it again. Check one, two. Like 
black silk, cradle by the wind. He worked his flat bottom boat. Throw that bar, lift that bed, hold in the shore. Captain Tucker and the Madison loaded down like a country store. He traded pigs, eggs, and chickens, bacon, tallow, hides, and gum. What he lacked on this trip, he'd have on him and grub. Woke up on the swine king, where the water flowed like black sand, and cradled by the river, he worked his flat bottom boat. Madison worked at Swanee River. Those high water the springs, open for a king. Woke up on the sun, where the water flowed like black sand, and cradled by the river, worked his flat bottom boat. Oh, Rod had flat bottom sleeping, you know, I'd be those double stacks. The Louisa, the Paul Yuli, of course, there was the Swanee River Bell. And the last flat bottom died up back in 1923. The first Puckers in Madison, the last was the city of Hawkinsville. We woke up on the swan where the water flowed like black sand. Muddled by the river, he worked his flat bottom boat. He woke up on the swampy, and the water flowed like black sand. And cradled by the river, he worked his flat bottom boat. And cradled by the river, he worked. Is that possible? Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I almost jumped in with you. Whoa. Oh, mic drop. Whoa. Mic drop. It happens. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Congratulations, there, you young man. man. the harmonica. Oh, I tell you, I almost jumped in. I found out it was in the key of G. I'd like to thank everybody who helped. Tom Johnson, all the folks. Of course, y'all have a... Oh. Great to welcome Great to welcome are you done? We need you up here, hon. Oh, she's not done. Well, I guess you want to know you got to go over there. You want to know if you want, you got to go there. Folks, thank you so much for your support of the Swanee River Songwriters Contest. We'll see you back here next year. I'll have a safe trip home for everybody who helped. Good night. God bless you, and I'll see you here, there, or in the air. Good night, folks.
But it's always good to meet you too. I don't think I've really had a chance to Well, when the family is familiar, I try to keep those stuff because I'm happy. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, it's just enough words. So, one of these days, one of these days, family, man. Yeah. Uh, do the drive follow up? Is that from Appalachia? Was that from? I, I think I did. Let me, let me look. I believe I did. I feel like, I believe I did. What's one song? Is this one, right?
Scott, are you going uh, kayaking Sunday? Yeah, I'm thinking about it, Marty. Yeah, man. Cool. I need a little wine down that tomorrow. Sunday. <laughs> That's right, Sunday. Right? Thanks, Lake. Yeah, it's one of the few places you can see the full moon rise and the sun go down at the same it time. It looked pretty good tonight. I know it's not said to be cold tonight, but. Yeah. There's like bats coming out of the uh, cold. Yeah. Trees. Yeah, and they're home, man. They'll fly right up to you, but they don't ever hit you, man. Not yet, but. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I'll talk. Right, man. I'll see you out there. I'll see you. Thank you. 